Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Indiscipline Mind podcast for Wednesday, December 16th, 2015. It's hard to believe that here we are past the midway point already of the month. That's pretty pretty wild. Um, only three days until I go see with the family uh, the new Star Wars. So I am looking forward to that. <sighs> I'm just trying to, to get through the work week, get through the get through my remaining time. There are, um, let's see, I have counting today because I haven't made it there yet. I have six work days left for the year. I've got the remainder of this week, and then I've got. Um, the next week as well. So, yeah, six work days. Let's get those done. I I had a nice surprise yesterday. I I had a mention on Twitter, which, you know, isn't necessarily all that nice surprise, but it was a a, a, a tweet by Patio Books stating that somebody had given me a donation through Patio Books for borrowed time. And that's awesome for a couple reasons. You know, number one, uh, Patio Books gets a chunk of that and it helps support them and that's awesome. And number two, I get a chunk of that <laughs> eventually. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think the same person left a comment on the uh, comment stream and I actually need to get on there and respond to it. Um, so if you have me listening, I think the guy's name is Phil. I'll have to look at the tweet again. Uh, but if you're listening, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I will be commenting soon. Be sure to check out Stolen Time. And I'm I'm trying to gear up so that uh, the third book in that series, Wayward Time, can be out probably around this time next year, if not earlier next year. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. So the rest of this podcast, I'm going to label NSFC. C, not safe for children. Uh, not that I'm going to be explicit really in any way, but I'm just going to be discussing some parenting truths that are prevalent this time of year that children do not need to be listening to, if you get my draft. So if you're listening to this in the car and you get a little one uh, with you, which I... I I figure it's probably pretty uh, uh, unlikely. <laughs> but just in case, uh, I don't want to ruin some kid for life. So just in case, uh, turn this off now and listen to it later when there aren't little ears. So, all right, are they gone? We get them out of here? Good. I hate those kids. No, I'm kidding. Um, so when our daughter was little, you know, we did the whole Santa Claus thing. And you know, every Christmas, we are not at home. We are at my in-laws. And so... You know, we'd always, we'd always be there. So, so my, first, my first issue always was, you know, in keeping the, the, the mystery of Santa Claus, was I had to get the presents there. <laughs> we had to get them there. Um, we didn't intend to buy anything huge. I mean, it wasn't like we were buying her, you know, these really humongous gifts. And if we did, we probably would have arranged to just have it shipped there. But, you know, the other gifts, the ones that are, are a bit smaller, that can fit in the trunk, we had to figure out how to sneak them in. Sneak, you know, I had, to, I had to do the double sneak. I had to sneak them out of our house, get them into the car somehow, and then sneak them into the in-laws' house once we got there. Now, the good news is, is that our daughter was easily distractible. So I could do something like, you know, send her off, oh, go get me this. And I would use that, that couple of minutes while she's going to get whatever to sneak the presents out of the house. And I, and I would tuck them in the in the trunk behind all our luggage and crap. 
and then that way, you know, she would, even if she came out and, you know, and happened to see me packing the last things in the, in the trunk, she wouldn't see it. And then she was kind of the, you know, the, it was kind of the opposite when we got there. Although usually she so, she was sort of distracted, you know, greeting the grandparents and, and, and looking at their tree and presents for her, that it was a little bit easier even at the in-laws. And then, for the longest time, their church did a midnight Christmas Eve service that we would go to. So it started at 11, and you were getting out at midnight, or you are darn close to it. And so we'd get home, and we'd have to... You know, we'd have to get her ready for bed... And we would pretend to get ready for bed. Well, we really, we really were getting ready for bed, but we weren't getting in bed yet. Get her all settled down. And then we had the Santa stuff to do. So we had to bring out the toys. We had to bring out the candy. And then this kid got in this, as she got a little bit older, you know, she, she got in this phase where she would write Santa a letter and wanted a response from Santa. So I'm, I'm, sitting there at one in the morning writing with my left hand (laughs) which is you know my handwriting sucks with my right hand you can imagine what it's like with my left hand but I'm trying to be kind of quasi neat and and kind of make it look a little flowery Santa-ish and I'm writing this note back and you know so maybe if we're lucky one o'clock we're heading to bed you know and that was enough for me you know and, and sometimes you know, the list of things that she wanted to know and wanted to answer to, and it's just like, holy crap, kid, I don't want to be up half the night writing a letter to you at my, you know, two words a minute speed that I can do writing with my left hand. So I, I got to say, I am, I am pleased that the whole elf on a shelf phenomenon didn't really kick off until she was beyond that age. Because I, I just really don't think I want to be bothered with having to figure out some, you know, funny, unique thing for the elf to do for 25 freaking nights <laughs> in a row. <laughs> that being said, I've got to say, I really enjoy... Um, watching other people's elf on a shelf. That's probably one of the most fun things about, you know, especially Facebook is where I see it the most uh, at Christmas time, is is seeing seeing other people's. And, and there's two main families that are, that are pretty pretty good about posting their pics. Uh, and there was there was one, and you know, there, there's been a there's been a shot that's been going around for years that is a shot of. Um, a, a row of these of these uh, peanut butter kiss cookies. So they're like a peanut butter cookie, and then you you, just, you put a Hershey's kiss in the middle of it. And uh, so they apparently made some, and they'd left some uh, without the kiss on them. And so they made it look like an assembly line, where you had like maybe three or four with the kiss, and then you had a couple that didn't have the kiss, and so squatted in front of the of the last or maybe the first cookie or the last cookie with a kiss on it you know with the other ones in front of it is this elf with the thought being that the elf has pooped out the 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 the, uh, the Hershey's kiss and in the caption goes something like well that that answers that question so you know this guy did something kind of differently he put his elf in like a wine glass and instead of Hershey's Kisses, there were a, a, a little, a few <laughs> of the semi-sweet chocolate chips, uh, which have a similar, you know, shape. And, and it was funny, and I laughed, and then <laughs> the mother of that family posted a video, and, and their, their little boy, who I don't know what his age is, he's probably got to be six-ish, give or take, you know, four years, I don't know, he's not anywhere. 
he's probably in the five to six range. <laughs> he came into the bedroom and he's all excited that that you know the elf has has pooped into a glass and the poop is chocolate chips and he was it was just hilarious. Now I'm kind of curious how he knew the poop is chocolate chips. I mean, does that mean he ate one? I, uh, there's been some other other cute ones. Uh, we got another another family who's got this elf that they've named. His name is Zavi, X A V I, and Zavi's always in the mischief. And there was a cute one that was I think earlier this week, where uh, they must have a dog, and so so Zavi was sitting there next to a plate with a a a, a whole milk bone. Uh, dog biscuit and then a partial milk bone do- dog biscuit with the idea being that you know Zavi has taken a couple bites out of the milk bone biscuit and uh, he left a note for the little boy in the house saying these cookies are awful don't leave them out for Santa <laughs> and then this morning apparently Zavi took it in his mind to um, uh, decorate the house and so it looks like he found uh, some uh, whitey tidies, but they're not whitey. They're 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 you know they're they're colors, and I think one you know they're bright colors, and I think one was camo. And he's he's strewn them up around the living room uh, by string as Christmas decorations. So uh, if you're a parent doing Elf on the Shelf, uh, number one, I'm glad I'm not you. <laughs> number two. I just got to applaud your creativity because there's some, there's some really funny stuff out there. And even though I'm not doing it, I do enjoy um, watching it from afar and vicariously living through the elf on a shelf movement. So yeah, that's what I thought I'd talk about today. Uh, get a little Christmassy on the podcast. I am thinking about Christmas. Tis that time of year. Anyway, I think I will let that be that for the day, and I will be back tomorrow, and I'll be talking to you then. So, be seeing you.